discovering virtual worlds, our favorite games, and why we love them. Hi Emma, how are you today? Hello David, I'm good. How about you? I'm great, thanks. I was wondering, what's your favorite game? I enjoy many games, but if I had to choose one, I would say it's The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. What about you, David? That's a great choice, Emma. I love The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. What makes The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, your favorite? I think it's the open-world adventure and the freedom it offers. The art style is breathtaking and the story is deeply immersive. Plus, the puzzles in the game are challenging and fun to solve. What do you love about The Witcher 3? The Witcher 3 has an intricate storyline with compelling characters. The decisions you make in the game have real consequences, which makes it feel very real. I also enjoy the rich world building and the mix of fantasy and realism. That sounds fascinating. Do you prefer single player games or do you enjoy multiplayer games as well? I enjoy both, but I tend to lean towards single player games for their narrative depth. Multiplayer games can be fun for their competitive and cooperative aspects. What about you? I have a similar preference. I appreciate the storytelling and character development in single-player games. But playing games with friends can be a great way to connect and have fun. Agreed. It's interesting how games can offer different experiences to different people. They can be a source of entertainment, storytelling, social interaction, and even learning. Absolutely, David. Games can be educational too, teaching problem-solving skills, strategic thinking, and even historical facts. Yes, I've learned a lot about medieval history from playing The Witcher 3. It's amazing how games can spark interest in various subjects. True, David. It's always a pleasure discussing games with you. Maybe we could play a multiplayer game together sometime. I'd love that, Emma. Looking forward to it. The fresh face of academia, what's our new teacher like? Hi Emma, how are you today? Hello David, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm good, thank you. Hey, I heard we have a new teacher. What's she like? Oh, you're talking about Miss Thompson. She's very interesting. She has a different way of teaching. Different how? Can you explain a bit more? Well, she's very interactive. She uses a lot of technology in her lessons and encourages us to engage in discussions rather than just listening to her lecture. That sounds quite modern. I appreciate teachers who try to make their lessons more engaging. What subject does she teach? She's our new English literature teacher. She has a great love for books and she makes the texts come alive with her interpretations. That sounds amazing. I've always felt that a good teacher can inspire a love for the subject. How is she with the students? She's very approachable and friendly. She encourages questions and appreciates when students share their thoughts and ideas. She seems genuinely interested in helping us learn. I'm glad to hear that. I believe that a teacher's attitude towards their students can greatly influence the learning experience. Is she strict about homework and deadlines? Yes, she is, but in a constructive way. She believes that discipline is key to learning, but she's understanding when genuine problems occur. That sounds fair. I'm excited to attend her classes. How can I prepare for her teaching style? I think being open-minded and active in class will be a good start. Also, it might be a good idea to read ahead and come prepared with your thoughts on the text. Thanks for the advice, Emma. I look forward to meeting Ms. Thompson and learning from her. You're welcome, David. I'm sure you'll enjoy her classes. She brings a fresh perspective to learning. It certainly sounds like it. 
Thanks for sharing, Emma. I appreciate it. No problem, David. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Have a great day. You too, Emma. Take care. Tuning into the rhythms of life and engaging conversation about music. Hi Emma, I hope you're having a good day. Do you like listening to music? Hello David, yes, I'm doing well, thank you. As for music, yes, I absolutely love it. It has a way of touching the soul. How about you? I couldn't agree more, Emma. I'm a huge music fan too. It has the power to elevate my mood instantly. What kind of music do you generally prefer? Well, my taste is quite diverse. I enjoy classic rock, pop, and sometimes classical music too. It depends on my mood, really. How about you, David? That's a nice mix. I'm primarily into blues and jazz, but I also enjoy a bit of country music. Music genres are really fascinating, aren't they? They definitely are. Each genre has its unique sound and history. I've also found that the type of music one listens to can say a lot about their personality. True that, Emma. Music indeed mirrors our emotions and identities in a way. Speaking of which, do you play any musical instruments? I've been learning to play the guitar for a couple of years now. It's a beautiful instrument, and I love the process of creating music. Do you play any instruments, David? That's fantastic, Emma. Guitar is indeed a versatile instrument. As for me, I play the piano. I find it calming and therapeutic. That's wonderful, David. Piano music has a beautiful, soothing effect. It must be a great stress reliever. Absolutely, Emma. Speaking of which, have you ever attended live music concerts? Yes, I have, and I must say, the energy in live performances is incredibly infectious. There's something magical about listening to your favorite band play live, isn't there? Absolutely. I think live music has a certain charm that can't be replicated in recorded versions. It's the atmosphere, the crowd, and the rawness of the sound that make it so special. Indeed, David. This has been a delightful conversation. Let's plan to attend a live concert together when we get a chance. That sounds like a fantastic plan, Emma. Looking forward to experiencing the magic of live music with you. Have a great day. Flat Tire Drama, The Nail in the Wheel Good day, Emma. How's it going? Hello, Merlin. I'm alright, but I had a bit of car trouble today. I discovered a nail in my tire. Oh no, that's a nuisance. Did you manage to get it fixed? Not yet, Merlin. I am not quite sure what to do. I don't know much about car tire repairs. Don't worry, Emma. It's quite a straightforward process. Have you got a spare tire and a jack in your car? Yes, I have those. That's great. In such a case, you can replace the flat tire with the spare one for now. Later, you can take the damaged tire to a repair shop. How would I do that, Merlin? First, make sure you're parked on a flat surface and turn on your hazard lights for safety. Then, use the car jack to lift the side of the car where the flat tire is. Okay, that sounds doable. Once the car is lifted, you'll need to use a wrench to remove the lug nuts from the wheel. After that, you can remove the flat tire and replace it with the spare one. Then, secure it back with the lug nuts. I see. And how should I deal with the nail? It's best to leave it in for now. The tire repair shop can remove it safely and then plug or patch the hole that it's left. Sounds like a plan, Merlin. I'll give it a try and then take my tire to a repair shop. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Emma, just remember, safety is paramount. If you're not comfortable doing it yourself, you should call roadside assistance. Thanks for the advice, Merlin.
I'll keep that in mind. No problem, Emma. If you need any more help, feel free to ask. Good luck with your tire. Thank you, Merlin. I appreciate it. Anytime, Emma. Drive safe. Journey to the great outdoors, discovering our favorite national parks. Hi Emma, have you ever visited a national park? Hello Merlin, yes, I have. In fact, I enjoy visiting national parks. They offer a great way to experience the natural beauty of a country. How about you? I share your sentiment, Emma. I love the serenity and the natural beauty that national parks offer. Out of curiosity, what's your favorite national park? That's a tough question, Merlin, because each national park has its unique charm. But if I had to choose, I'd say the Yellowstone National Park. It's just magnificent with its geysers, hot springs, and diverse wildlife. How about you, Merlin? I can understand why you would choose Yellowstone. For me, it's the Grand Canyon National Park. The sheer size of the canyon and its colorful landscape are simply awe-inspiring. The Grand Canyon is indeed a natural wonder. Have you had any memorable experiences from your visits to these parks? Indeed, I have. During one of my visits to the Grand Canyon, I had the chance to watch the sunrise over the canyon. It was an unforgettable experience. How about you, Emma? My visit to Yellowstone was filled with memorable experiences, but watching Old Faithful Geyser erupt was truly exceptional. That sounds spectacular. These experiences remind us of the beauty of nature and the importance of preserving it, doesn't it? Absolutely, Merlin. National parks are a vital part of our ecosystem. They protect our biodiversity and offer us a chance to connect with nature. I couldn't agree more, Emma. Our conversations always leave me with a deeper appreciation for nature. I feel the same way, Merlin. Here's to more adventures and discovering more amazing national parks. Indeed, Emma. Looking forward to our next enlightening conversation. Take care. You too, Merlin. Have a great day. Day of the Dead Festival in Mexico Hi Mary. I recently heard about a unique festival in Mexico called the Day of the Dead. Do you know anything about it? Hi James. Yes, I do. The Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos in Spanish, is a traditional Mexican holiday that celebrates and remembers loved ones who have passed away. That sounds interesting. How do they celebrate it? It's a colorful and festive event. Families create altars, or ofrendas, in their homes to honor their deceased loved ones. These altars are decorated with flowers, candles, photos of the deceased, and their favorite foods and drinks. It sounds like a beautiful tribute. Is there any significance to the items placed on the altar? Yes, there is. Each item has a specific meaning. For example, marigold flowers, or sempasakil, are believed to guide the spirits to the altar. Candles are lit to welcome them, and the food is an offering for the spirits. That's quite meaningful. Are there any other customs associated with the Day of the Dead? Absolutely. One popular tradition is the creation of sugar skulls, or calicas. These are colorful, decorated skulls made of sugar, which symbolize death and rebirth. I've seen pictures of those. They're very vibrant and artistic. Are there any special foods or drinks during this festival? Yes, there are. Pan de Muerto, or Bread of the Dead, is a sweet bread that's commonly made for this occasion. Also, a drink called Atoll, which is a traditional hot corn and masa drink, is often consumed. It's fascinating how the Day of the Dead seems to mix celebration with remembrance. Is this festival only celebrated in Mexico? 
The Day of the Dead is primarily a Mexican holiday, but it's also recognized in other cultures around the world, especially those with a large Mexican community. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, has even recognized it as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. That's amazing. I'd love to experience the Day of the Dead Festival someday. It seems like a beautiful way to remember and honor our loved ones. I agree, James. It's a unique celebration that embraces death as a natural part of life, which is quite different from many other cultures. Thank you for sharing, Mary. I've learned so much about the Day of the Dead today. You're welcome, James. I'm glad I could share this with you. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to ask. Will do, Mary. Thank you again, and have a great day. You too, James. Take care. The Cheese Rolling Festival in England Hello Emma, have you ever heard about the Cheese Rolling Festival in England? Hi Louis, I have heard a little about it, but I don't know the details. Can you tell me more? Sure, it's a very unusual and fun festival. It's officially called the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake, and it's held on the Spring Bank Holiday at Cooper's Hill near Gloucester in England. That sounds interesting. So, what happens during this festival? During the festival, a round cheese is rolled from the top of a hill, and people race down the hill after it. The first person to reach the bottom of the hill wins the cheese. Wait, so people actually run down a hill chasing a cheese? That sounds quite dangerous. Yes, it can be quite risky, and there are often injuries. But the participants take part for the fun and thrill of it. The hill is quite steep and the race is very fast. Wow, that's quite unique. But why cheese? The tradition of rolling a cheese is said to have originated hundreds of years ago. The cheese used is a double Gloucester, which is a hard cheese traditional to the area. That's a fascinating tradition. Are there other events during the festival? Yes, there are usually a number of races throughout the day, and there's often a festive atmosphere with spectators enjoying picnics and music. It sounds like a great community event. How can someone participate in the festival? Anyone can participate in the cheese rolling. There's no need to register in advance, you just need to show up on the day of the event. But remember, it's quite a steep hill. It sounds like a fun experience. I'd love to see it someday. Thanks for sharing, Louis. You're welcome, Emma. If you ever get a chance, I think you'd enjoy the unique experience of the Cheese Rolling Festival. I think so too, Louis. I'll definitely add it to my list. Thanks again. No problem, Emma. If you have any more questions about it, feel free to ask. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Louis. You too, have a great day. Thrilling tales from my grandfather's wild youth. Hi Emma, you'll never believe the crazy stories my grandfather used to tell me about his youth. Hello Louis, that sounds intriguing. Would you like to share some with me? Absolutely, Emma. To start, my granddad was a bit of an adventurer. He once hitchhiked across the whole of Europe when he was just 18. Really? That's remarkable. He must have been very brave to undertake such a journey at a young age. Yes, indeed. He said he had only a backpack, a map, and a heart full of curiosity. He would sleep in hostels, camps, or sometimes even under the stars. That's quite a daring adventure. Did he ever share any memorable encounters during his travels? Oh, yes. He once told me about the time he was in Italy, where he worked at a vineyard for a few weeks in exchange for food and lodging. It seems he was also resourceful. What else did he do during his young years? Well, he also loved music. 
he learned to play the harmonica and would often busk in different cities. He said that his harmonica was his companion and even helped him make friends along the way. Your grandfather was quite the character. He seems like he knew how to make the most out of life. That's true, Emma. He also believed in helping others. Despite his own limited means, he would share whatever he had with those he met on his travels. I'm truly amazed, Louis. Your grandfather's stories are a testament to his adventurous spirit and kind heart. They remind us of the joy of exploring and the importance of kindness. I couldn't agree more, Emma. I think his stories have definitely shaped my perspective on life. It's about making memories, meeting new people, and growing through experiences. Absolutely, Louis. Thank you for sharing these wonderful stories. They've certainly made my day. You're welcome, Emma. I'm glad you enjoyed them. Have a great day. Thanks, Louis. You too, have an amazing day. The Running of the Bulls Festival in Spain Hello Mary, I've heard you went to Spain last summer. Did you by any chance attend the Running of the Bulls Festival? Hi James, yes, I did. It's a unique and exciting event that happens in the city of Pamplona every year. That's interesting. Can you tell me more about the festival? What exactly happens there? Sure, I'd love to. The festival is called San Fermin, and the running of the bulls is just one part of it. It's an event where people run in front of a group of bulls that have been let loose on a course of a sectioned off subset of the town streets. That sounds dangerous. Why do people do it? It's a tradition that dates back to the 14th century. Initially, it was a practical thing, the bulls had to be moved from the city outskirts to the bullring where they would be fought in the afternoon. Youngsters would jump among them to show off their bravado. Oh, I see. So, it turned into a festival over time. What else happens during the festival? Apart from the bull runs, there are many other activities like parades, fireworks, and traditional sports. It's a week-long festival, and the whole city is decorated with red and white, which are the colors of the event. That sounds like quite a spectacle. But, aren't there any safety concerns during the running of the bulls? Absolutely, it can be very dangerous, and there have been injuries and even deaths in the past. Before the event starts, there are safety instructions given, and you must be over 18 to participate. It's also advised not to participate if you have been drinking. That makes sense. It's important to be careful. Did you participate in the running? No, I didn't. I watched from a safe distance. It was thrilling enough just to be a spectator. I can imagine. It must have been an unforgettable experience. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the festival? Just that it's a huge part of the local culture. The people of Pamplona take great pride in hosting the San Fermin Festival. While the running of the bulls might be the most famous event, the entire festival is a celebration of the city's heritage. It sounds incredible, Mary. I'd love to see it for myself someday. Thanks for sharing your experience. You're welcome, James. If you ever decide to go, I'm sure you'll have a great time. Just remember to stay safe. Finding our life's purpose. Hi Jennifer, how are you today? Hello Michael, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thank you. I've been thinking a lot about life recently specifically about finding a purpose in life. Do you have any thoughts on this? That's a deep question, Michael. Everyone has different beliefs about life's purpose. Some people find purpose in their work, while others find it in their relationships or personal growth. Yes, I agree. I think it's essential to find something that gives our life meaning. But how does one find this purpose? 
Well, it's a personal journey for everyone. It starts with understanding yourself better. What are your passions? What are your strengths? What do you value most in life? That makes sense. I've always been passionate about music and art. But can these passions be considered a life purpose? Absolutely. If you can use your passion to make a positive impact on others or to find personal fulfillment, then it could indeed be your life's purpose. I see. But how can I make sure that I'm heading in the right direction? It's important to align your actions with your values and passions. You should also set goals that can guide you towards your purpose. Remember, it's okay to make adjustments along the way. That's helpful, Jennifer. What if I encounter obstacles or challenges? It's natural to face challenges in life, Michael. They help us grow and learn. It's important to stay resilient and keep pursuing your purpose, even when things get tough. You're right, Jennifer. I believe that challenges make us stronger. What else can I do to find my life's purpose? Keep exploring, Michael. Try new things, meet new people, and step outside of your comfort zone. It's also important to practice gratitude and appreciate the journey. Thank you, Jennifer. You've given me a lot to think about. You're welcome, Michael. Remember, finding your purpose is a personal journey, and it's okay to take your time. I'm here if you ever want to talk more about it. I appreciate that, Jennifer. I'll keep everything you've said in mind. Have a great day. You too, Michael. Take care. An overview of the Burning Man Festival. Hi Mary, have you ever heard about the Burning Man Festival in the United States? Hello James, I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. Can you tell me more? Of course. Burning Man is an annual event that takes place in the Black Rock Desert of Nevada. It usually happens at the end of August and beginning of September. What happens at this event? Well, it's a very unique festival that focuses on community, art, self-expression, and self-reliance. People from all over the world come to create a temporary city in the desert. A city in the desert? That sounds interesting. Yes, it's known as Black Rock City. The participants, or burners, build installations and art structures. The festival is named after the ritual burning of a large wooden sculpture of a man. Oh, so that's why it's called Burning Man. What else can you do at the festival? There are many activities you can participate in. There are music performances, workshops, and various events. But what's really special is that everything is created by the participants themselves. So, it's a community-driven event? Exactly. There's no separation between performers and audience. Everyone contributes in their own way to the experience. It's also guided by a set of principles, like radical inclusion and gifting. Gifting? What does that mean? It means that burners are encouraged to give gifts to each other. These gifts can be anything from a handmade item, a song, a performance, or even help with a task. The idea is to promote a sense of community and cooperation. That's a beautiful concept. Is there anything else I should know? One more thing, it's a leave no trace event, meaning everyone is responsible for cleaning up and leaving the desert exactly as they found it. It sounds like an amazing experience. Thank you for telling me about it, James. You're welcome, Mary. If you ever get the chance, I recommend going. It's truly a unique experience. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks again, James. No problem, Mary. If you have any more questions in the future, feel free to ask. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too, James. Take care.